why do my drawings keep looking so cartoon-like is a frustration I often have expressed to me one way or another. And this clearly is from people who want their drawings to capture a greater sense of realism, where the cartoon influence in their work is unwanted. I do believe that working out where things come from, where influences have come into our drawing process, our drawing practice, is a great way to start to work out of those influences and into the place that we would more deliberately like to be able to direct our drawing. So let me explain why I think it's so easy to be stuck in a bit of a cartoon looking style in our drawing and not capturing the sense of realism that we'd like because I think it's the starting point of moving into drawings that do capture the sense of realism that we're after. So when and how did our drawing journey start? Because this is where the influences that we're not happy with in our work now came from. And for most of us, it's almost certainly in our childhood, in our very early childhood. Most kids at some stage draw to some degree as part of their growing up experience. There's a pencil and some paper, and it seems to be part of our natural creativity to express ourselves and the world around us with making marks. And I'm always interested in seeing the drawings of very, very young kids who are still uninfluenced by cartoons, although they're harder and harder to find these days, but not influenced by cartoons, by storybook illustrations, by what the kids at school are drawing, because they usually produce very compelling, very effective representation of their subjects, usually in a very oversimplified way that really imaginatively captures some elements of their subject. So often kids draw faces because the people around them are the most important part of their world for them to see and to take in. But they often leave out elements that are just not very important to them. The necks, the ears, very often the eyes are very big. A child might draw a lot to the point of too many very exaggerated teeth if they find teeth a bit scary and therefore teeth are a focus in their thinking, in their observing, and therefore they capture that focus in their drawing. But once we start to watch cartoons, we become aware that cartoons are life represented in a visual form. And we can make the link between the cartoon cat and a real cat, between a cartoon house and the house we live in, between a cartoon flower and the flowers we see in our garden. And for many of us, we start to actually copy our favorite cartoons, our favorite cartoon characters, scenes from our favorite cartoon comics or books. And we don't realize when we do this that in fact what we're copying is someone else's creative imagination, that of the animators or the illustrators who produce these drawings in the first place, because they were looking at the world and simplifying it into these forms. But as a kid, I'm just copying what I see. I'm not actually developing my creative imagination in the way that I might have done as a three-year-old, drawing the picture of the man with the scary teeth, but no neck or ears. Because we're not using our creativity, because we're not using our ability to see something and to transform it into something else on the paper, we're not developing that skill. We're developing the skill of copying. And what we learn to copy are these overly simplified representations of real objects, often in what is really a totally different form to what they are in life. But we learn to see them as representing those real life things, even though in many ways they don't particularly look like them. In other words, we come to see these things as symbols for the real things. A symbol is a shorthand way of representing something that's larger and more complex. When we see a symbol for a fast food chain, that symbol represents their entire menu, it represents my entire experience of that chain, it represents all the advertisements I've seen, and it pulls them all together, often very powerfully, in one big bang. When I draw a symbol for a flower, and by that I mean probably a circle just with petals coming out and a stick and maybe two ovals for leaves stuck to the sides, I'm saying this represents all of our experiences of flowers, even though it doesn't particularly look like any real flower that we know of. In cartoons, these symbols are a form of shorthand. 
they enable very simplified stories to be developed and animated and put together quickly and therefore cheaply. And these stereotypical ways of drawing things, these symbolic ways of drawing things are particularly used the more complex the real life object is. So we think of a tree with all of its massive leaves and details and twigs and we learn very early that I can draw a tree by basically doing a, a circle with a stick sticking out of the bottom of it. We learn that to draw grass we just draw a couple of very chubby rounded stylized clumps and that that means grass. And now I don't have to worry about all of these individual blades of grass and how on earth do I draw them. But as I then go to draw as an adult, these are the influences that I have in me. These are the experiences that I have in me. This is the way of thinking and drawing that I have in me. And so it's naturally enough my starting point as an adult. Although of course, while I'm starting from this same place, I'm trying to do it to a higher standard than I achieved as a child. And yet I find there's a place where I can't push through, can't push past cartoon-like looking drawings. Often with a strong focus on heavy outline around the outside of subjects. And I've had so many people say, yeah, I just, I always seem to put a heavy outline around the outside of the subject even though it's not really there in the reference. I don't know why I do it. Well, I do because that's what we have in cartoons. We're so used to seeing that. It's hard to not feel that somehow it's a part of a proper drawing process. And it doesn't matter whether we start drawing as an adult, as a 12 year old or an 80 year old, we seem to go back to this same starting point wherever we left off in our younger years. Of course, in the in-between years, a lot of things have improved. We've certainly improved and refined our ability to see detail, to see a whole thing. We've improved our hand-eye coordination in lots of areas. We've improved our ability to understand theoretical concepts that affect how things look, things to do with perspective or, to think, or things to do with light. We in fact may be more aware of things such as composition and maybe choosing these more deliberately. But our concept of what drawing is and fundamentally how it's done often hasn't changed at all. And this is our problem. We're still heavily influenced by our childhood presumption that a good drawing is one that seeks to copy the reference as closely as possible. Even though, of course, our reference is now a whole lot more complex than the Donald Duck cartoon frames that I was trying to copy when I was a kid. And that our aim is to draw lines that, in effect, create the same shapes that we see in our reference enclose the same spaces to create the same appearance. And so there is this great focus on lines and on outlinings because that is the primary cartoon effect that we see. That's the skill we need to learn to copy the cartoons correctly. It's the way we start to see our subject as shapes enclosed by lines. So that determines the thinking and techniques we develop and use what our goals are for the end drawing. And the more closely I can do this, the more exactly I can do this, the better my drawing. And that was the case when I was copying a cartoon. But when I'm copying a photo, there are problems. It is infinitely more complex. The effects that I see in my reference are infinitely more sophisticated and varied than I see in a cartoon drawing. But with the same way of thinking, we use the same approach, the same technique, the same goals in our drawing. We struggle with them because let's face it, they're not well suited to a photo, say a photo of the scene behind me, as well as they are suited to a Donald Duck cartoon. And then we wonder at the end why our drawing still has this cartoon-like appearance, why it doesn't feel real in some way. It feels artificial. Can I say, this cartoon-like mentality way of thinking that we get as a child also won't actually help us develop a good adult cartoon comic style drawing because it hasn't taught us how to create cartoons. It's only taught us how to copy them. And it probably, if they're mass-produced cartoons, the sort of things we watch as kids, hasn't introduced us to the sophistication in the ink work of the adult comics and characters and backgrounds that we see today. If I want a more sophisticated way of drawing, I need to develop a more sophisticated way of thinking. 
I need to understand the process that I'm wanting to have happen, that I'm needing to have happen to develop the outcome, the drawing that I want to have happen. I need to think in ways that feeds into that rather than thinking ways that feed into a type of art form that I'm not wanting to have in my drawing. And for me, the major shift, the breakthrough point, was shifting my thinking. That drawing was about enclosing the shapes I saw in my reference accurately in my drawing, and instead coming to see that my reference presented me with certain visual effects that I was wanting to recreate in some way in my drawing. I couldn't use the language of the photo because I'm not a digital printer spitting little pixels of colour ink and combining them. I have a black pen. So I have to have a way of translating what I see, the visual reality that I see, I have to have a way of translating that into certain marks that still will create the visual effect in my drawing that I perceive in my photo. It's not about enclosing shapes at all. It's about capturing a visual effect. And I really worked this out at the start from things such as trees and the grass, things that were impossible to draw. And I began to think, oh, well, for those things where there's overwhelming detail, I need to try and capture the effect because I can't draw the detail. And that worked very well for those subjects. But at some point I came to realize that actually there's no separation of some subjects where you draw them this way and other subjects where you draw them trying to represent the shapes accurately. That in fact, everything always was about marks to capture an effect. Even when there was a simple shape that could be easily drawn with lots of straight lines. My goal wasn't to capture the shape accurately. It was to capture the visual effect of that shape in its context. Taking into account the surface material, the reflectiveness or not, the lighting and so forth, the sharpness of the edges, the sharpness of the corners, all of these things create the appearance, create the visual effect of what I see in my reference. And all of these elements I need to take on board when I work out what marks will create that effect. Now I'm going to obviously have to capture the shape in some way as part of that. But depending on what the shape is made from, straight outlines, even if that's basically the shape in a simplified form, won't capture the effect, won't capture the slightly rounded edge or the slightly uneven edge. And it's only if the object actually does have very sharp corners, very straight edges, that drawing that way would be appropriate because it captures the effect. And if you're finding this helpful, please help me out and hit the like button and leave a comment and tell me, does this resonate with perhaps where your drawing progress has come from so far? Now, in many ways, it's far more challenging to think of making marks to create effect than drawing lines to outline shapes because there's infinitely more possibilities of marks that we can use and effects that we can create. And so there's a whole lot more thinking to do, a whole lot more planning. But there are also infinitely more effects we can create with marks than we create with oversimplified outlinings. And they're all marks we can use if we want to take us away from a more cartoon-like looking drawing and capturing the effects of reality far more effectively. And this opens up scenes that were once impossible. Scenes such as this behind me. Scenes such as this one I drew, which I could never have attempted to draw. I never would have thought were practical to draw a couple of years ago because there were so few, if you like, objects to outline. Everything in this scene seems so insubstantial with the exception of the railings. And even they have a certain weathered textured look and feel, which can be a challenge to represent in our drawing. But the tangle of bush, how could I have drawn that? Well, I didn't try and draw that. I tried to capture the effect of that by using marks that weren't concerned with outlining, that were concerned with how could I capture the effect with my marks. And so this is now the way I think with everything I draw, whether it has a bushland component or not, what marks will capture the effect that I see in my scene. I hope this has been helpful. And even if the cartoon approach doesn't ring true for you, 
I certainly believe that the focus that I've developed when I draw now is one that can open up so many more possibilities for so many people in their drawing. And I hope that you're one of them. But look, whatever way you draw, however you think about it, and however that creative thinking translates into ink or pencil or whatever on the paper, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.